That's a fish. Love him. Welcome. All right. We are on the bank of a new limb stretch, limb anglers club that is, of the River Weaver. And we're going to catch a fish. Now, it has been absolutely lagging it down, which is never good. Um, and uh, I wasn't all that confident on the swim at first um, but um, I've settled down I've, I'm not doing anything silly like a big chuck or like that uh, but I took my eye off the ball for a minute just making sure that Mitzi was uh, comfortable and uh, I looked round and my rod was steaming off down that way and I picked it up and I just got broke off basically just took me through a massive snack and I haven't got a clue what it was so we'll go through the setup we're fishing a feeder we'll show you exactly what we're setting up it's not complicated anyone can do it you don't have to be a feeder master to be able to do this sort of fishing we're just using a 4000 size reel um, a nine nine foot medium feeder rod you know carp feeder rod you know something with a two ounce glass tip I, I do like the glass tips anyway what we've got and we'll set it up now is we'll go through it now is we'll just use some of these little pellet waggler adapters okay we're going to stick them on the line first now this is 0.22 diameter line you don't have to be too anything too heavy so these well that was an otter on the other side then it's a log adapter thing here so they come um pre-set up like this look you've got loads of rubbers on them and all the rest of it and all you do is you get your line little wires on them and they've got loads of stops on them and then what you do is you 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 need glasses on for this well basically you feed your line through a loop like so <gasps> oh it's come out do it again put that down i haven't got enough fingers to this to do this <laughs> oh yeah throw the packet in. let the wind eat it Mitzi, bring it back. Anyway, you, you get the idea. You put them on there, yeah? And you pull everything up the line. Now, I'm pretty certain I only want two of them. I don't want three. So all I'll do is pull it all up the line all at once. That's one, two, and three. There you go. All up the line like so and then what you've got is everything trapped so we want to use it like a bolt so it'll move up and down so there's a, a quick release swivel on there which we're going to put the feeder on okay once that's done put that away right and then this is how quick it is you know what i mean this is honestly how quick it is i'm not doing a big chuck so i don't have to do anything oh god it's bubbling like so green out there we need to get out there quick so what we do then is we pull, pull some line off there. I'm gonna cut that little bit of line off. When you're cutting line off, rather than cutting off loads and loads of line and just just nibble it off like so. Yeah. yeah it'll break down in the sunshine. Little pieces, tiny little pieces. Right, now what we want to do is create 
a twizzle loop around about four inches long so pick a healthy bit of line start twisting 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 yeah keep pulling it back twisting 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 there we go all twisted up and then what I'm going to do is put two big knots on loops on that just you know granny knots so it's like one feed it through again and there oh god come on back through and there we have it boom and then I'll take that tag end off with my scissors do need my glasses on really for this there we go take the tag end off there we go all done and then what I'll do then is I'll slide those two little rubber stops up to the very end of the twizzle loop and I'll set that one about four inches three or four inches whatever you, and it acts like a bolt then for is either a cage feeder draws lots of fishing and I've been using that or a nice block end nice old one we'll use that and I think that's about 35 gram or something which is perfect for it for, for this swim so we'll undo that little clip on there All right unclip it well, we're not going to use a cage now. I used a cage early on. That, that helps. I'll, I'll put the feeding nice and soft, and it sort of helps draw fish into the area. But now I'm, I'm happy that I've got a fish in the area. I've got a nice, what's the name, block end. And I'm, what I've been using, absolutely brilliant. Because when I'm fishing worm on the, these big river systems like this, I actually like fishing a head hooked worm on about a size 14. But these quorum 15 inch big at stops at ace and then if you've got four inch you've got about 20 inch we're going 19 inches or something which is bloody long enough i'm telling you for what we're doing especially with the bolt rig so what we're going to do is a nice and quick these a reasonably cheap get from any tackle shop nice quorum ones i think what are they now uh, what type of hit um the all-rounders these are barbless ones and barbless are fine just, you know as long as you're you're happy with using barbless on the river and then because you've got a big loop in here yeah, which is there open this one up there we go a little loop on this one what I'm going to do is open this loop up with my What's then? There's a loop there, but I want it a bit open it up. Now what I'm going to do is slide that loop through that big loop. Go on, on you go. Which in. Do it a lot quicker than me. I've just got rubbish eyesight, you see. And then um, push the whole lot through. Pull the hook out the other end. And um, it's all done. All done. Okay. Look, look at that. Lovely. And what you do then? Pop your little doobry doo there on your little hair stops like that. Big bag of worms. Get a nice stem drill like that. Pop head straight through. Pull that out. There we go all hooked up right now the ground bait we're using oh lovely we're using the hinders supercharged black and all i've brought with me is the hinders hemp and maize you know like the ready prepared ones and the three and a half litre tub really good value for money by the way and the, and the, the maize in them is lovely and then all i do is i, I just put a little bit of one on one the feeding which is I brought casters which is going in the feeder some of the hinders two two point three millimeter micro pellets the uh, the cart ones it's a pinch of that in there because that's that's the feed for the bream and then we're gonna plug that feeder tight get it down to the bottom we're only doing a short chuck it's an underarm chuck 
Get that off my leg. That would help to cast. Thank you. Straight on it. Then we're just gonna watch it, okay? That's it. I don't know if you can see it from there. I would imagine you can. Picked up the flow on the river. Really has. But the uh, supercharged black has been absolutely brilliant for the bream. The bream are absolutely loving it. I think I've had around about, I've been fishing around about, I'd say, about an hour. And I've had a couple of perch and I've had three bream. I think it's either three or four bream and then I've lost them. But look at the tip. The thing is, is got to let those bites develop, those little stabbers like that, the chances are they might be chublets or perch or something like that and uh, I use a full worm because on a size 14 hook it's quite a big get wide gate hook though, you know what I mean it's, you know, you, it's, a, it's a bit of a chunker but I use that because I'm waiting for something to develop and I want those big fish in the swim. And if I thought, I've, I've brought some maggots, I've cut back a little bit now. Uh, when I first started the swim off, there was a bit of maggots going in. But I've cut it back, um, just so I'm not drawing in the wrong type of fish, nor too many of them. But, we're not leaving that feeder out there for long. The way I look at it is, I need to feed these fish, the big hungry fish. The tip's going round now, Look, if I felt like I needed to draw more fish in, I'd take that, that feeder off and i put a cage feeder on. Oh, look, see that? Massive tip, I don't know if you can see that. Massive tip bounce. What I need to do is I want to put a wide area of uh, hemp. So, there's plenty of hemp in those here. The point was trying to put it in with just the feeder. It'll take all day. So I do is just spread it out, out there, willy nilly, doesn't matter, over a wide area. Yeah, I just want to bring bream into the area. Think on that now, I've got a funny feeling, it might be a perch. It's a skimmer. It's a bit small. But it's the right fish in the area. Full worm. Through right through the head. Just one. And he isn't up some. Again, underarm trucker. Tip the rod down low, just let it feed off. And let that rod settle. There's a bit of pace picked up on the river now. Earlier on, you know, I had to take in a little bit of the slack off there, but it's picked up and after I got it teared out, I don't know what, what the fish was, it was a big fish. Uh, there's a lot of big fish down these stretches. Some really big bream, some chub and carp, pike even, you know what I mean? But uh, it snagged me up under something here. Got to keep putting that bait in though. These are big fish, you got to feed them. When in the middle of summer, it's not like you're scratching for bite. Middle of summer, we've had a bit of rain, it's very coloured, the water. The fish will be reasonably active. 
the tips going down we just don't want to be bringing in too many of the wrong type of fish Danny further up there he's fishing completely different he's fishing I think he is fishing feeder but he's also been fishing the stick float under his feet which you'd think would be right the wrong tactic but he's been catching chublets and roach and lots of other fish so but with having this tree line here above my head and there's not many pegs cutting here yet so if there's anybody in limb anglers um wants to fish down here there's plenty of fish I feel like already that that's been a problem oh my god See that? It's a bloody cormorant. Unbelievable. It's under my feet. Whoa. Another skimmer. To put my hand in on the wrong side of me here, right, just because of the way that the swim is. Oh, get in that there. Yeah, Brilliant. Down. Fish ass about tip just to get these in beautiful green. Some of this fish. And we'll show you the bream. And there we have a beauty duck. I'll stick this one straight in the peak net. Down the chute she goes. And straight back out. And I am putting plenty of, uh, of that hemp out there. Just big hungry fish, you've got to feed them. Something's had that. You have to keep feeding these fish, otherwise they'll just go on you. And the big fish. Oops, sorry, camera. Those joints on that landing that pole are tight. I've lost a lot here. Oh, that's another big fish. Perfectly hooked. Right. And there we are. Beautiful. Another beautiful bream. Let's get that one back in the net. Down the chute. Down the chute. Oh. 
So we're getting a good response now. Grab that bait out as much as you can. Don't try and put it pinpoint on a river. You never know whereabouts it's gonna go. It's just like it'd be pot luck. Spread it out. Bream actually got a turning circle about 30 foot big and size. <laughs> so uh, and they sort of come down, they don't sort of like go mm, 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 like most people think. You just come down and take them off, you know. Take them off in a big bloody big great big circle. Very competitive as well, you know what I mean? They'll snatch and run. Yeah, gently snatch. Mm, snatch. Run. Like that. Oh. It's just gone again. Got a funny feeling that's more of a perch bite now. Huh? Not putting any worm in the uh, the ground bait or anything or feeder, as it were. Um, the way I like to see it is the ground bait's like the Manchester tart, and all those little ingredients inside, like the custard, and that'll be like yeah. In there's a uh, what's known uh, supercharged black, and then the sprinklings on the top, you know, like would be like the bits of castor and hemp, and <laughs> the what's known the pellet, but the worm is the cherry on the top. That's the way I like to see it, anyway. Feed her back out there. a really good take. Nice to get me uh, landing net back on the right side of me again. That's another lovely green. Bit of chunker. Get up here. Get up here. Coming fast and furious now. Another lovely green.
I'm not fishing onto a clip, but I'm fishing the same pressure on the cast more or less every time. More or less I know I'm on, on the ball. It's alright, like I say, putting that feeder out and all the rest of it, but you want to sort of like bring in plenty of fish. Plenty of hemp out there. Hemp. Amazing. Gone again. Just got to keep feeding them. Skimmer. A little bit smaller. There. Oh, not going to complain. Lovely little skimmer. Down the chute you go. Make sure all this is... Oops, crap on the line, sorry. Cut that out. No um, snag on the line. Make sure it's all taken off. Worm's still good to go. A little bit shorter that one. I'm not happy with that cast. Bit of hemp and castor. Obviously, if you're fishing on a match or something like that, and you're only allowed to feed through your feeders, stick to it. Um, don't be tempted. It's, it's a lot easier to catch bream if you can use a, a catapult within range. You know, you can you can sort of gauge what sort of area. You you want those fish to graze over because they don't look like cows, you need a bit of space as well. Right, grumpy things. Anyway, if you want to get some good casters, really, really fresh, Paddy Manglin's supplies. Have a word with Steve. Uh, I think they're about four quid uh, for a pint of caster. Really fresh. He just turned them at, in the shop in front of me yesterday. I had to have some. Uh, not ringed or out like that and support your local tackle shop, that's what I say. Well, the cast is all done is it's taking some of the water that was on the hemp and that, you know, like the the prepared particles and I've just put it straight on top of the and mixed all the hemp and everything all together. Like that. Everything's already in there. Soaking each other's juices up. No, I wasn't happy with that cat. But I just seen the tip move and I just struck on it. <laughs> and there's another one on it. Another beautiful green. So I'm building a nice weight now. They're not little fish. Make sure everything's working right. I'm going to switch the cameras off in a minute for a while. Just to save the batteries and I think it's going to rain a little bit. And we'll come back in, in a short while and we'll, we'll see how we're getting on, eh? And uh, get this one out. I'll catch you what. Wild. Good quality hemp, lots of maize, and just mixed it up with some casters. Oh, nice. Stay there. Oh, that's a Right, a bit of a 
Right, a bit of a catch up what we've got going on. I've got Mitzi uh, barking at everybody that's going past and every single dog, which is not good. Um, it's not raining, the wind's picked up and it's been steady away all day. Um, you tend to get an idea that there's fish in the area. It's fizzing out there right in the, in the centre of the at the moment. But it's quite deep, I reckon it's a, a good 10 or 12 foot deep out there, maybe a little bit more. Um, having to regular cast, um, using the cast pull uh, and the stamper fish has been quite consistent. I have a bit of a tangle up on one of my rigs before so I replaced it. Um, and I had one, one fish kick off my, uh, my stop on my hair rig and uh, I've had to basically scrap the whole rig and start again. So these are the things that happen. We've just got to reset this one. Get some more baits out there. It's still, still running on hair rigs worm, although that worm has hooked itself, which is not good. There we go. And that's moved a little bit. Let's shorten that a little bit gone back on the cage feeder to try and draw some more fish in. I'm still not, I'm just letting it tick down to the bottom. It's a little bit shallower there, which you like. So, oh, look at that. There was a one on that on the way down. Dolphin, that's a bream. Got to get them out with some big pike here. That is a big hybrid. It was a clunk, clunk of a hybrid. Yeah. Flick it out. Oh. Keeping everything, still keeping everything well away from me. And still putting some bait out. It's quite important to have a, a good size hook, you know. I mean, the, these uh, core and power hooks, um, they say the 14s, but they're more of a size 12 or, a, or a, even a 10. They're, they're a big hook, but the, the wire on them is quite good. It's quite, it's not as heavy as a lot of uh, sort of specimen type hooks which I like which penetrates the lips tough lips on these river green which tends to be quite tough um, really good but it's important as well to have a little bit of play before the bolt just to give them a bit of confidence when they pick that worm up before they move off so I usually set it about three to four inches and it seems to be working that. I want to put the bolt on completely and um, been erratic the bite and they're the ones that are lost. A lot of fish moving really close in as well, but I don't fancy targeting them. There's, there's fish here coming through. Uh, but the fish, they, they seem to be settled further out as well. And you, you can see that the bubbles coming through. There's a lot of fish here. Um, they're not really moving around. They're moving around in a shoal, but it's a really big wide shoal. It's not like a tight shoal. Again, they always seem to be moving up against the current and the current's going that way. Shoe coming in here now. <laughs> did it pick up? Oh yeah. Did it do the trick? Uh, don't dig in it, did it? How many have you had? No, no, maybe yeah. that one there.
Right, I'm gonna make this my last fish, I'm a thing. So what I'm gonna do a bull cast on this. Get it on the mother road out there. Is that a boat? Gotta be joking me, it's the only one all day. Sounds like a boat. What's a boat? state of it. Ah, it's just, it's just smack all over me. Ah, man. Ugh. I had to make sure that one was on. <laughs> Biggest fish, but it'll do. Get out of that tree. You oh, out of that tree in a second. Never good to stick me in the tree. Beautiful little bream, lovely fish to finish on, and we'll have a look at that, a quick look at that now. Right. We had a good net, net of fish, I don't know, can't estimate it. It's a good one. Uh, I don't know how many, there is a lot. And catch you a lot later. Don't forget, please subscribe. See you later. That's going to need a good clean when it gets home. Look at the state of it. Oi, where have you been? Oi, mucky paws. Hello, mucky paws. Hello, baby. You are beautiful.